What's going on guys? Welcome back to RC Every Day. Things are still a mess here. Still packing and yeah. <laughs> Don't know where a lot of stuff is. And uh, I keep getting questions in the comments about the semi-truck front axles and how I'm using certain wheels on them. So I figured this would be a good informative video I could do with what I still have not packed. Um, I don't have any of the right rods packed yet because they're kind of delicate and I'm not sure yet about anything. So um, I got an axle out here. So these semi-truck axles are made to have bearings. The This wheel is the same as the semi-truck wheels. It has a round hole. You slide in ball bearings that have that size shaft in it. And they're the exact width to cover the smooth part of that spindle. And then you put the nut on tight and it just spins. Um, there is no exact art to this. Every one of my rat rods is done differently. And uh, we're going to walk through all the different ways that I've mounted wheels with 12 millimeter hexes onto this. So, the first thing we have, I have on the uh, flame rat rod here, you pull this off. I have an adapter. I got this from Shapeways. It is kind of dirty and mucked up. But it has a 12 millimeter thing. It is a certain width. I don't know how wide that actually is. It works well, except it, come on, it's about 10 mil thick and it has a opening in the inside that is 11, 12 ish. And you slide a ball bearing in there and it allows it to spin on the shaft and then it fits inside of your 12 millimeter hex wheel like so. Now the only issue I've ever had with this, A, I can't find them again. I got it on Shapeways and B, it didn't fit any kind of bearings that I had. Your standard, there's a Tamiya bushing. It's in there, you see it's it's got a little bit of slop. So those wheels, they it works. Um, the main takeaway from this, all of these rat rods, all of these customs, I don't drive much. So some of the methods I use, you may think, how is that ever going to last? They don't get driven that much. These are, you know, they, they have to function. That's my rule when I build something. It has to run and drive, turn, and lift up or down, or whatever it needs to do to actually move under its own power. But uh, this is the probably the nicest way to do it. Um, again, I cannot find these on Shapeways. I don't remember who designed them and who sold them. Um, I know there's some other ones out there. I've had people comment with some some other place or I think it was a print file somewhere on Colts 3D or uh, one of the other websites like that but that is one method and then you could just slide your 12 mil hex on and bolt it down it's a lot of times the problem I have with this though like this wheel has its own nut and it's it's like you have a 12 millimeter widener on there it's got its own little thing you can't tighten the nut all the way down or if you tighten it all the way down it stops the wheel from spinning so that's why some of them I have uh, the wheel nuts on backwards. You use a nut without a, a lip on it like this one. And you can actually screw it on backwards so the nylon part of the lock nut goes on first and that way it actually holds because sometimes the thread won't always reach far enough through to put it on the proper way. So again, it, it, it can be janky, but the next method I've found, it's actually quite hilarious, is what I have back here on number three. This is a body post screw or nut with threaded on the inside. These are off of the RJ Speed Bowlink style pan cars. <clears throat> um, like this guy over here. Like that red 55 Chevy up there. Those body posts on those are large and plastic and it has the nut that go on and you can buy those for like two dollars get a set of four of them for a couple bucks so again talking about <clears throat> the depth of it i have some washers on here this one i only have one and that allows me to run this vanquish wheel and i believe that is a pretty deep adapter but you can use any of the depth adapters on it but again this fits in it's like a standard 12 millimeter hex and you just have the plastic riding on the spindle and the wheel We'll spin on that. Uh, some of them I've greased. You can use like a, a, a lithium grease or something on it to help give it some lubrication. But again, I don't drive these a lot. And I've honestly, 
I don't think I've actually ever greased any of them. So I've never had any problem with them. This one you might have a problem with over time from a lot of use because it is plastic. Um, it might wear down, which will lead us to our third option here. So again, pardon the mess. Got <laughs> scale stuff everywhere. So this one I've got spaced out properly. This one runs these really wide RC four wheel drive uh, rally wheels without the chrome ring on them. And it's again a 12 millimeter hex. And I've got a RC four wheel drive 12 millimeter hex that I've just drilled out to fit on that shaft. And then I have a brass bushing instead of washers to set the uh, offset. And uh, that's metal on metal and it does spin just fine. That would be one I would definitely probably grease if I was gonna run. But that that's, I mean, it doesn't get much more simple than that. That fits over that shaft. Those shafts, I think, are, let's see if I can get this in there with accurate measurement. My caliper's seen better days. It's accidentally been cut. It looks like six millimeter inside of that. So these shafts are probably five, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's right at five mil thick, so. I don't remember what size drill bit I used, probably not, not, not the right one. But it's close enough and it works. And again, the spacing, uh, I'm out of washers that actually are five mil in the center opening. I don't remember where I got those. I might have come on my little home hardware kit. I got at the dollar store when I bought my house. <laughs> I've used a lot of that stuff. It's all standard, but I've used a lot of it on RC components. But bushings make good spacers. Um, there's no rhyme or reason for how it works. I just use what I have at the time. And um, yeah, so put this one back on. I can't even find my uh, nice wheel nut screw, unfortunately. Come on, there we go. So we'll see, this one might actually need some more spacing to be able to tighten it down all the way. But you want to get it to where you have enough of the shaft, the thread sticking out, that you can actually get into the nylon part of the lock nut, which, yeah, see if I go all the way tight, it locks the tire. So it needs a little less spacer, but we are in the nylon on the lock nut, so it works. And again, it's not perfect. Nothing's perfect. I've got a little bit of slop in both of these, but it's enough to uh, get the job done. And like I said, this, this is just the many ways that I've found. There anything you got that can work. Um, if you have a ball bearing that would fit snugly in a 12 millimeter hex, I don't know what size that would need to be, but as long as it's got a five mil inner diameter, it would work. Um, just run all washers, it would work. I was looking at the number one rat rod, 32 Roadster, and it has those RC4 drive Mickey Thompson like five spoke wheels on it right now and the way those work the uh, 12 mil hex part bolts or unscrews from the hub of the wheel and you can turn it around and it's round on the inside so then you can just put ball bearings in it and run it on there so it depends on the wheel the thickness of the wheel and just all the variables that have to do with the tire and wheel setup on what you're building but again I mean there's I mean, you could if you can find these parts, they're, they're great. That was, a, I think that was a resin print from Shapeways, and it's, it's been pretty durable. I haven't had any issues with it. I've probably driven that rat rod quite a bit more than some of these other ones, because it is actually kind of fun to drive. But no issues with that. Um, again, even like this one, when we did these, when we just drilled out the 12 mil hex, I've driven that quite a bit. We redid the paint job on this this year run it around the yard quite a bit and there's not any scratching or marring on the shaft itself and that's metal on metal not greased so it all depends on what you're going to use it for um, i wouldn't worry about it really messing anything up and um again to these axles the ones i use like this this one that one all of them except for the one here in the middle they are a custom lowered axle that i find on ebay uh, it's some Chinese company that they have them in California and they ship them from the United States. 
they are $50 or $51 or something for the complete axle or you can just buy the centerpiece if you already have a semi-truck axle. Um, it, it's one centimeter of drop, just looks cooler and it allows the way I do suspension to give you more room to do your suspension and keep the ride height low. Um, this one here is a stock-ish, I think that's like an Entogy or one of the ones you can get for like $12 on eBay with the knuckles and the steering link and everything. So it just depends on what you're building. Like again, I like these because it, it is lower and it works with my way of engineering the suspension. Keeps everything horizontal the way I like to do it. Um, I have used these on other things. I think we chopped one of those up for the Winnebago. I've got one chopped up on the Peterbilt Rat Rod and uh, the Rat King Hauler. As you can't see it, so it's, you know, it doesn't matter where the suspension arms and stuff mount when it's got a full body on the front. But, yeah, there are lots, lots of different ways to go about it. But I'm going to wrap this video up, guys, just kind of a little quick impromptu how-to. Something I probably should have shared with y'all a long time ago because I get asked about that a lot. But I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Keep it scale, and I will see y'all next time.